welcome everybody to the Multifamily and More Expert Series. I'm your host, Jamie Gruber. And in the Expert Series, we dive deep into a specific topic with our expert guest in the area of real estate, mindset, or anything in between. Today's guest, Pat Hyben, is a billion dollar agent, ranked number one in the world at one point by Remax and Keller Williams, which is unbelievable. He's the former host of the Real Estate Rockstars podcast with amazing guests, by the way, if you go check out that podcast. He's the founder of Rebus University, uh, which he since has sold, but still a great, uh, a great education platform. He is the New York Times bestseller of two books, well, one book at least, Six Steps to Seven Figures, which I have right here. Great, great book, especially if you're a real estate agent. And the, also the author of Tribe of Millionaires, which we'll talk more about in a few minutes here. I love this book. Uh, and he is a founding member of the Mastermind Go Abundant. So Pat, welcome. Thanks, buddy. Good to be here, Jamie. Great to have you. Great to have you. So you have had some amazing success to be the number one ranked Remax and Keller Williams agent in the world at one point is, is nothing short of fantastic. So there are, I'm sure, tactical things that you deployed from a lead generation standpoint and all of that. But I want to get into how you got to be there from a mindset perspective. So what are some things that maybe you did or you really leaned into to get yourself to this place? Yeah, that's, um, that's a great question. I mean, um, you know, I guess number one is uh, it goes back to the, you know, Gary Keller's concept of the one thing, right? Like at the time I had one focus and one focus only, and that was how to build a team that sells more houses, right? Like how, sure. how to get more listings, right? How to get more listings, how to, how to, um, get more people to use us as a real estate team. And, um, and that was it. And the mindset was also monomaniacal in that it, it, it just, it was, you know, I set the goals and then I just reaffirmed them every day and looked at them every day and, and did what needed to be done to get to that point. So let's talk about, you say, I love the term monomaniacal, by the way. I don't think I've ever heard that before. That's <laughs> phrase of the day. We'll do a hashtag on that. Um, talk to me about goal setting and how you looked at those and affirmed them every day. Like, can you give me like an exa- a specific example? Because I think people struggle with this. I know I have. Like, what do I say a goal is? Is a goal like a metric? Is it a feeling? W- what would you say? What are some goals you wrote down? How, how did you do that? Let's start yeah, with that. It's definitely not a feeling. It's... it's um... Is, is it a metric? Yeah, it's always a metric. Yeah, I think it has to be a metric in, in order for you to keep track of it. Um, and so I think maybe that's where people make a, a lot of mistakes when they set goals is it's not a metric. Um, the, um, you know, so I think the biggest thing when you're setting goals is you have to set big goals and then little goals that tie into the big goals. So, mm-hmm. you know, if my, if your goal, let's just take a simple goal of, of, of you want to be a millionaire, right, in real estate, right? Because I know a lot of people listening are, are real estate investors. Well, your goal, that could be your goal. And there was a movie that came out called The Secret. And if you, if you saw that movie, it basically was like, if you believe you can achieve. Um, and you could like literally sit there and go, I am a real estate millionaire. I am a real estate millionaire. I am a real estate millionaire. And then suddenly you will become one. The problem with that is, uh, it goes back to a saying that Jim Rohn used to have, and that is, uh, um, affirmation without discipline is delusion. I'll repeat that affirmation without discipline is delusion. So, um, you know, you have to say, okay, I'm a, I'm a real estate millionaire, but in order to become a real estate millionaire, you got to buy your first house. And in order to buy your first house, you have to save up a down payment maybe, right? Most likely. Yeah. Um, uh, and you also have to look at deals. So then you would find small goals. You'd find a small goal of, of um, I save $10 a day, or I save $100 a day, whatever it is you want for down payments, Right for investments. Um, and then you say, I review 10 deals a day and you review 10 deals a day and you figure out cash on cash and cap rate and stuff like that of 10 deals. Even though you're not going to buy them, you're doing it just to get in the habit of, of knowing the deals and understanding them and, and, and helping your mind think that way. And then while you're saving, then, then, you know, so, so without the small goals, You'll never reach the big goals. And the small goal has to be a daily goal. It has to be, 
you know, it's like lose same thing with like losing weight, right? It's like, you know, it has to be one day at a time. It has to be, I eat 1200 calories, no more than 1200 calories a day. And that's it. I just got to make it through today. Mm -hmm. If you keep doing that, you're going to lose a ton of weight, you know, but you're never just going to lose it in a day. It just doesn't happen like that. Interesting. You mentioned uh, Gary Keller earlier, and I think what you're talking about, the small goals is almost his concept of goal setting to the now, right? Big goal put out front and then chunking it down to 10 bucks a day or whatever. It's interesting to me how you phrased it though. I save $10 a day. Is that, is that a statement you use or was that just for this interview? Like what, what, what is that when you say I save $10 a day, is that a way of affirming the goal in your way? Yes, absolutely. Because if you save $10 a day, well, it might be, what is that? That's 300 bucks. Um, and that's $3,600 a year. So it might not be that, right? That doesn't get you much. But if you want to, if you want to buy your first rental property and you need 10,000, so you figure out what that's going to be. And then let's say it's a thousand a month. So then it's $33 a day, right? So you go, I save $33 a day. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. Quick math. I love that. So, yeah. so when you're doing affirmations, when you're doing an affirmation on this, you are taking the goal that you set, these micro goals or goals set to the now or the smaller goals that play off the bigger goal as you described it, and you're restating it in a way that it becomes ingrained in you. Is that a fair characterization? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Because we don't believe, I think we tend to not believe. We tend to doubt. We tend to doubt other people and we tend to doubt ourselves. And um, I think it's natural. I mean, it's a, it's an American way, right? It's a, uh, you know, I read a statistic in psychology today that said um, the average two year old boy gets 11 no's to every one. Yes. Meaning they get 11 negative statements to one positive statement. So, and you have a two year old, so you could probably, understand. it's more than 11. It's more than 11, but yeah. I guess. So yeah. So it's like, don't touch this, you know, don't touch that, that light socket, you know, stop pulling your sister's hair come here, don't do that, um, blah, 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 right? And then, oh, you're such a good boy, or you're so smart, or thank you for finishing your meal, or whatever it is, right? You, you know, so we grow up, and we believe, you know, nine times out of 10, that things are, are negative, not positive. So by using affirmations, you're programming your subconscious mind that, that, that things can happen, that things can be good, that things can work in your favor, uh, that you can achieve the goals. Um, so you're kind of, it's kind of like you're just unprogramming all those years of programming. Yep. No doubt. The, uh, the two-year-old, like I said, it's more than 11 no's, I'm sure. But yeah. to your point, we, we, my wife and I try to be conscious of saying what they can do versus what they can't. You mentioned the light socket. It's like, not don't play with the light socket, but here, play with this, more of an affirmative or a positive uh, reinforcement. Yeah. And, uh, and my, it's a little quick story. My five-year-old, about a year ago, I started doing affirmations with him at night, just three things. Like I am, oh. I am uh, smart, I am strong, I am good, or something like that. A little video. And he, started, he started adding on his own recently. Like he just started throwing some in there. So it was kind of a neat little thing to see because you're right, we're all programmed in the negative. So all right. absolutely. Very cool. Last thing on affirmations, I've heard you talk about um, not only stating your goals in the affirmative, which I think is a, an amazing tactic, but you've also, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, have recorded your affirmations. Have you not? And played them back? Talk, yeah. talk to me about what that looks like, how often you do it. What do you do with that? Um, you know, probably six months, I'd probably redo it every six months or, or whenever anything changes, you know, because like now I, now with COVID and everything, everybody's goals have changed, right? So, yeah. you know, now, now some people's simple goal is not to catch it. So it could be, you know, I, I, I practice uh, safe precautions. I'm, I socially distance whenever possible or at all times. Uh, you know, I sanitize my hands, you know, 14 times a day or 140 times a day or whatever. Uh, all, all with the tactical goal of, of just, number one, not getting it. Um, another one now that uh, I'm doing and a lot of people in GoBundance are doing is, is cash. You know, I, you know, uh, you know, you're, you have a, a, we all should have goals as to what percentage of our net worth is actual cash, right? 
you know, my, my cash to net worth ratio is 20% or more at all times is an affirmation, right? It's not right now. It's not, but, um, but that's my goal. My goal at the end of this year, um, you know, is to have a 20% cash to net worth ratio, which is a lot of cash and just have that cash um, sitting there uh, for when the market um, is ripe. And, <laughs> ready to deploy, right? Ready to, ready to, ready to pounce. Deploy. Yeah, which I don't think is going to happen for a while. And for me, for a guy who over the last 10 years has been, you know, primarily an investor, um, you, you know, the way that I get high is moving money, is, is like, you know, selling this and buying this right? Um, learning this and, and, and deploying it here. Um, just buying and selling, buying and selling. And uh, quite frankly, it's an addiction. And so it's very difficult for me personally now to not invest, even it, not even go out and like buy a, a Bitcoin or buy a um, Exxon stock or, or just some simple thing that you know that you you hear podcasts and they're like oh exxon stock is 25 percent of its value I'm like damn let me buy 10 grand of that well no 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 you can't invest like so it's for me it's a struggle but so what i'm tracking now is every day is like a, that i did not spend any money on investments and that you know i added to increase my cash to net worth ratio it may, may sound like a a weird goal but that's the tactical goal that that i need to focus on today well, so you've incorporated two things that you've just talked about, I think, in that last statement. And that is one thing. So you've got a singular focus, right? Go back to that first point. You've got to kind of be linear. Mm -hmm. And then second, your point about, about um, programming. So you've, you've programmed yourself, which many would see as a healthy programming, to deploy cash in a way that returns you money, right? To, to, to invest, essentially. And you're having to deprogram that mindset because you've made it so ingrained so that you can realize the benefits in the future. So to right. your point, you have to, even, even a healthy programming, what seems to be a healthy programming, you may need to deprogram because you have to program a different set of, you know, neural pathways or whatever uh, yeah. into yourself to get to yourself, to get to where you need to be. So yeah. interesting, very interesting. So let's talk about this book, Tribe of Millionaires. Yeah. Fantastic book. Give me a little bit of background and maybe where people can find it. Yeah, so Tribe of Millionaires, you can, first of all, the way you can find it is you can go on Amazon, you can pay 20 bucks. Um, it's there, we're selling a lot. Uh, or, or if you want, you can get it for free. We have a website, tribeofmillionaires.com. That's tribeofmillionaires.com. You get it for free. All you got to do is pay the shipping. It's like seven bucks. Um, and uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, and um, it's a book we wrote. So what happened was, I met uh, David Osborne about 20 some years ago and Tim Rode about 15 years ago. And, and, and as two guys, we started, three guys, we started just uh, going over goals and talking about money and talking about investments and talking about cool stuff. And through that relationship, um, it, people started wanting to be involved with us, kind of tag along on our trips and things that we took together. And we started growing organically. And then when we reached, uh, at one point, I think we had like 12 guys come to David's house just to hang out and go over goals and stuff. And we're like, damn, we should charge money for this. So, <laughs> uh, so we created a company called GoBundance and uh, now we have 200 some members. And um, in, in that's what we do. We do a lot of goal setting. We talk finances, we talk health, we talk relationships, all that good stuff. But how the book came about was uh, we hired a ghostwriter, uh, which by the way, most nonfiction books are, are written by ghostwriters and most people won't admit that, but they are. And he went to Japan with us. So there was um, 24 GoBundance brothers that went to Japan. And uh, on this chat, Jap trip to Japan, he, he flew into Japan and he met with us and he hung out on the bus with us when we went places. And he watched us do our one sheets, which are like um, baseball cards, which we talk about in the book, which he flipped the baseball card over and it's got all everybody's stats, kind of like one of the stats is that cashed in net worth. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so, um, so anyway, so 
so he he wrote about he he met 24 people then he kind of made about six characters out of those 24 people i know you asked about that earlier the, yeah, those yeah. six characters most of the characters in the book are formed from a merger of the 24 people that were in japan and so he created a fable and the concept of the fable is a guy dies who has a really crappy relationship with his son and his son goes to the funeral and his son thinks his dad is a deadbeat and worthless, but he goes to the funeral and then he finds out that the six pallbearers that were carrying his dad's casket are really wealthy guys, very fit, very successful in great relationships and everything. And he can't figure it out how his loser dad, uh, you know, knew intimately all these, you know, non-loser friends, let's say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and so as the story goes, they tell him, your dad wants us to go over this estate with you, but he said, in order for you to get it, you got to fly to a private island with us and, um, and learn from us for a week. And what ensues is the lessons in the book. Broken down really well. Broken down really well. There's five or six lessons. It goes through really what GoBundance is built on, the tenets of it, right? What a mastermind is yes. um, and specifically how this mastermind operates. So people who have heard of are interested in GoBundance, if you want to get a peek, I guess, behind what happens, it's really in this book. And I will say this as a, as a, as a fully uh, ego-driven shout out to myself here, page 174, right there. <laughs> My name is there. I can't really see it that well, but I'm, I'm right there. There we go. Jamie Gruber. Boom. Right there. Proud card carrying member of this tribe. So uh, no, it is a fantastic book. I recommend everybody pick it up for sure. And tribeofmillionaires.com. We'll drop that in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe as well so you can get more and more of this content. Pat, thank you so much for jumping on today. I appreciate you being here. And uh, yeah, thank you. Man, it's been fun, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks again. Thanks again.